Cool Hand Podcast, something you got to deal with. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host. My name is Q. We are in Atlanta with it. We're in Atlanta, y'all. And we have one of the best photographers, best videographers, best visionaries, best taste in music. We got a, a real Atlanta native in the building. True that, true that. Guess, can you please introduce yourself? My name is Jaden Thomas. I go by Don, the Trill Don on Instagram, and I'm everything he said, but just a little bit less. Just a little bit less. <laughs> He's everything plus more, because we're going to talk about what this brother does. Um, I've been rocking with you and your platform for about about a year now. Mm-hmm. We met at the first, um, we met at the second Castier event, which was here in Atlanta last year, and uh, you know, chopped it up a little bit, followed you on the gram, and uh, the rest was history. I'm um, very supportive guest, by the way. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, uh, just off camera, um, he he talked about how he uh, watches the show, like actually watches the show, like he's not capping, and um, I appreciate that because I don't expect the people who are on here to you know be like real fans of the show or anything like that so to have somebody on who actually <laughs> listens to the show i appreciate that so thank you for that no it's dope it's dope but enough about me um rambling so you're from atlanta from atlanta born and raised born, born and raised. raised what part of atlanta east point the home of the outcast the legendary outcast that's where i'm from east point georgia East Point, Georgia. Shout out to East Point. Shout out to Outcast. Shout out to uh, Flutes. So, <laughs> <laughs> what was what was life like growing up in East Point? It was it was kind of regular. Like growing up there, I did a lot of. Um, obviously, I was in school, but I did a lot of homework. I guess in school and everything. Like I wasn't really outside much, like the rest of the kids and everything. Like I had my friends in school. But nothing too crazy. Like, my folks really kept me inside type of thing. I only started going outside when I was older and everything. Got you. So did you have siblings as well? I have a sister. I have an older sister. Okay, older sister. And I'm I'm just going to assume she wasn't beating up on you. If your parents had no. you inside, like, it seemed like, <laughs> you know, you had a structured household where y'all weren't beating up on each other. No, no. She actually, she was actually 16 when I was born. So okay. we didn't really grow up together type of thing. Got you. Got you. And what was what what's the culture like for somebody um, who is not from not only East Point, but just Atlanta, forget Atlanta, Georgia. What's the mm-hmm. culture like down here? Culture is everything. We're the home of the culture of the around the world, especially here in the States. I think you get a lot of soul down here. I mean, you get a lot of soul from like people, New Orleans and everything and other South. But like here, it's like black cultures, like everything down here. It's like president for first and foremost that's the only thing you get down here and i love it mm-hmm. i know some people back in pittsburgh like they'll visit now i i, I got to live down here for about seven years mm-hmm. in the area of smyrna and Austell. so i have like you know a small sample size and a taste of georgia but i know some people who visited georgia from pittsburgh and they're like they call it black hollywood it is that's right <laughs> True. Be- because it's like that mm-hmm. like um i i got the i got the chance to play basketball with lloyd at LA Fitness. You play Lloyd in LA Fitness? Yeah, he's he's a lefty. He can hoop too. Yo, you don't know who you're gonna run into. I've heard so many crazy stories of people running into folks in Linux and here and there. It's crazy. I worked at Kroger in Smyrna. Um and Kevin Gates, before he was the Kevin Gates that we know. <laughs> I'm dead, dead serious. Before and I didn't know his music. My mm-hmm. homegirl who worked there, she said, That's Kevin Gates. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> But he came by, and um, he came by with his with his with his woman, and uh, they ordered some stuff from the bakery. So um, I, I served, <laughs> I served uh, Kevin and his and his wife uh, a, a cupcake. But um, yeah, Black Hollywood. So uh, as you were coming up, mm-hmm. what was the the environment? Um, artistically for you what did you like the music that you listened to the things that you watched what was that like as a young and growing up funny thing is like in school we did a lot of art stuff and music but I never was into it I hated art in like elementary school down to like fifth grade my art teacher was like she made like even certain um lesson plans for me because I didn't like it I told her I didn't like it I don't know why I did that but she said you don't like it I said no I don't 
And my music teacher, she said, you know, you're going to be in band and everything or in some music when I go to middle school. I said, no, I'm not. And I was like, in middle school, I want to join a band because <laughs> all my friends was there and they could sing and they could like they were real talented. So a lot of that when me and my mom used to go on road trip, she played a lot of Alicia Keys. That's the reason why she's my favorite artist. Um, a lot of Stevie Wonder. So a lot of like old school stuff, Al Green. So I, I kind of grew up on like 70s, 80s type of stuff. OK. And were were you so it was mainly R&B, mainly R&B. Yeah. No now, rap, no rap. <laughs> <laughs> so at what point did like hip hop come in for you? Came in like I say sixth grade because during that time I was a big 2K guy and I loved their soundtrack. So 2K13 put everything on the map. Jay Z, Nas, that was my favorite artist for like a long time, and I just started listening to him, Kanye, and it was just like a steamroll effect. I get in the West Coast, Tupac, and. I thought Tupac was everything. Like, you couldn't tell me nobody was better than Tupac in seventh grade. Nobody. So, yeah, it was basically that, like a snowball effect to everybody else after that. Easy E, NWA. I was the old school guy. Everybody mm -hmm. called me old head. So, mm -hmm. and eventually, because you have your, your username on IG, the Trill Dawn, and <laughs> with, I think most people associate Trill with um, Houston, Bun mm -hmm. B, UGK type thing. So, um, was there like a love for? eventually a love for like the Houston culture as well. Absolutely. Houston culture was embedded in me in 10th grade. UGK, Bun B, Pimp C, uh, Don Key, oh my, Slim Thug, Paul Wall. I was, I want to move to Houston one day. That's how bad I love really? it. So, yeah. So what is it about Houston or about the Houston music culture um, that you are so much attracted to? I just liked how real it was, like that chopped and screwed vibe. I never heard anything like that in my life. So I just thought that that was the coolest thing. Cause like, obviously I said Atlanta's a culture, but like Houston's like our little cousin type thing in my opinion. So <laughs> it was just a lot of that that I never heard before. And I just wanted to explore it. So it was my thing. All right, that's what's up. Trill Dawn with it. So <clears throat> now you said you weren't into like the art. You weren't mm -hmm. into um, the music type of thing. and But when you did get into music, playing an instrument, what did you play? I tried to play guitar early on. I was good at it. My mom said I was that better than my dad. Dad, if you're listening, I'm sorry. That's what she said. <laughs> but um, I, was, I was doing that. I love piano. I started playing piano a little bit um, on the keyboard and everything when my mom got me. But um, those are the, like my main two instruments that I try to play. Okay. So you still do it. I dabble with piano. I have a guitar in my room that collects dust. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So if you were to rate yourself, I'm trying to get a gauge mm. because I, I was expecting you to say like, okay, I started messing with the piano and, you know, fell out of it. But if you were to gauge your, you know, if you were to rate your skills, mm -hmm. um, where would you rate yourself at? Piano, I'm a three out of ten. Three out of, I can play a good chorus, a good good chorus but nothing else after that everything else it gets complicated so complicated what about guitar nope zero <laughs> i suck at guitar <laughs> so, so, so bad at guitar so i can tell that you're being modest you're a humble guy I <laughs> so <laughs> piano you're probably about a five five and a half to six on my best day but i don't have a lot of those on piano in guitar i'm gonna give you a two on a, you... terrible <laughs> a terrible day a terrible day all right so <clears throat> Now, what I know you for is, I know you for Alicia Keys, for one, mm -hmm. um, but I really know you as a creative person in the sense of capturing things on camera, capturing things um, cinematically as well. Mm -hmm. So when did your, I don't want to say love come in for these things, but how did you get into um, film and photography? Well, my mom, she was actually like the first photo person, video person in our family. So she was the person responsible for all the family reunions, weddings, this and that. It didn't even matter. She was capturing it. And how she captured it was real authentic. And she didn't like pose anybody. She just took the picture in the moment. So she was a big inspiration for me. And she always tried to get me into photography, but I never wanted to because you know when your folks push you to do something you're not really trying to do it mm -hmm. so she always got me like the little instant cameras like you know the ones from walmart and everything you get developed so she got me those when i was in school i used to take pictures of my friends 
certain school projects I dabbled with pictures and everything but it was really during the pandemic when I got into like photo and video because I saw a bunch of people that I followed on their Twitter to um, take pictures like Sonny he's a big inspiration for me with the photo thing because I was like man I can do that thing too I don't know why I'm just sitting here on the couch mm -hmm. so I picked up uh, my first camera it was a um, Canon T7 and that's how I got into it Really? So this was really during the pandemic. So pandemic, yeah. Okay, you had the disposable cameras from like you know Walmart, the grocery store, mm -hmm. and that was it before the pandemic. Yeah, wow. That was it. Nothing I, else. Wow. Okay, you've come far. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, so a Canon. Did you say a T seven? T seven. Yeah. Okay, and where does this rank among cameras for somebody who's <sighs> ignorant like myself? It's a low tier camera. Like you can get a lot done with it with the right lens. It always matters about the lens, but mm -hmm. I mean. Other than that, it's it, it'll get you by what you need. Got you. So let's let's focus on photography right now, mm -hmm. um, because photography is a complex field. If you ask me, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to know. Um, even before we were talking about the camera that I use, I don't mess with it. I just let it do its automatic settings and <laughs> let the camera work <laughs> for me. Um, I don't dabble with it too much because it is a, a complex thing. So um, when you decided to really dabble with photography um what was the journey like learning cameras white balance this that exposure um tell me about that it was gruesome it consumed me i was terrible at it i i suck i suck real bad but it was my my cousin's friend in uh detroit she had helped me to get my first camera settings going and everything. She's the one that taught me about ISO, aperture, all white balance and everything. And when she first told me to put it in manual, I was like, yo, this is so hard. But like when I took it, I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like I can control the specifics of it. So it was it was a real big help from her. My coworker taught me a lot. Um, shout out AJ. He helped me a lot with my camera settings, putting the right lens on and everything. So a lot of people helped me along the way. Mm -hmm. YouTube University, too. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to YouTube because you could learn a lot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> learn a lot. So when you began taking photos, what were you doing? Like uh, pretty much how were you finding your way and what you like to um, use as a subject? I knew I liked people um, because, you know, people can take like pictures of like structures and different plants and animals. I, I started out that way too, plants and stuff. But people was a real draw for me because I like to capture the raw emotion of people and everything. Like people can like pose for a photo and everything. Like when people when I take the pictures, I never tell them to pose. I always like get the actual expression of them because that's how you are in the moment. That's what the essence of a photograph is. So people based is what mostly I like to do. Mm. <clears throat> um, was there anything else that you tried? Like did you, you know, give like I'm gonna, you know, do landscapes and mountains and stuff <laughs> <laughs> was there anything that like you tried and thought no nah, this ain't it cars i love when like good people can take good pictures of cars but i'm not one of those i can't mm. you know it's never a draw for me like it's cool but i suck at it so what makes a good picture that's a that's a interesting thing that you said so what makes a good picture because i see your photos and i'm like okay this is hard this is hard is that what was his name like navy blue the rapper yeah navy i'm like blue. oh th those pictures were fire <laughs> and so what makes uh a good picture in terms of you know maybe a person versus a car you getting their natural expression like at that concert he was doing it was he was doing a lot of the same movements but it's when he came into the crowd those were when I got the best shots because he was rapping with the fan. He didn't even know the lyrics to one of the songs. He had one of the fans rapping with him. That was in one of the um, pictures I took. But what really makes a good photo is like, are you actually capturing a moment? Is this, if I'm going to look back at a photo I took last year, am I going to remember, yo, this is the person in this exact moment? If it doesn't capture that outside of like architecture and stuff, like what's the point of it? Okay. Now, versus a vehicle. Now, of course, a vehicle can't have a facial expression. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, because I, I really want to know how you view your previous pictures of vehicles as just not up to par. Like, what is mm -hmm. it about the 
good photographers taking pictures of of um cars versus your work <laughs> their work is obviously much better than mine because I, I don't even have car photography on my page it's tucked away in my files but they're just like i think it comes down to their editing too because they make it like look real crisp the the colors punch at you and everything but it still looks natural it captures like sometimes you'll see them drifting and everything the cars i could never do that it was always still and plus when i took pictures of cars i didn't even know what i was doing like I, this crappy photos. Didn't know what settings to use. Still early on, so mine was for sure gonna be trash regardless. So <laughs> I got you, and you know I forgot about that too. The the um the category of post production, the editing. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what photographers use. Is it After Effects or After Effects is like for motion graphics and gotcha. touching, like special effects. I use um Lightroom Classic. Okay. All right, so this all plays a part in in the whole photography thing and the questions that I want to um, get answered mm -hmm. because, okay, it's so much to learn and finding out that you really started doing this during the pandemic is kind of crazy to me because it seems like you've made just so much progress from um, 2020 to 2023 going Thank on you. 2024. Oh, absolutely. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm absolutely surprised. Like, I yeah, did not I, know I this. I literally just started. I did not do this all my life so your co-workers helped you youtube university um one of the homies in detroit i believe right yeah yeah so one of the homies or homegirls in detroit now that's one thing taking the pictures and so on and so forth but the actual editing part as well what did you have to learn in order to make a picture really come to life through the post-production i think a lot of it is getting it right in camera, like exposure and everything. Like if you have a super dark photo in your camera, like it's, you can't do anything to save it. But for post-production, a lot of it comes down to colors. Like my favorite pictures are the ones where your skin looks natural and everything, but the colors pop like even more. They have like not super a lot of contrast, but just enough to like make it look like something like 3D. So I try to get all my colors right in camera. And in post-production, I just tweak it a little bit to make sure that the skin is accurate. Because some people can't, like, edit skin, and I hate that. Like, they'll make, like, you look purple or something like that. Yes. You know, they'll, they'll make me look like my shirt. So, but it's all about how you. the skin tones and everything reflect what you're wearing. Like, they'll make, the, I can make the orange and green pop in this. It look like, dang, this is, like, punchy, really. And I, I like those type of photos. Got you. And where do you... Where do you see yourself going um, in the future with photography? Mm. I've been trying to make it into a business, so I see myself profiting even more from photography. But um, I just think more events, because that's what I'm drawn towards. Not weddings, not weddings, but like good events that I can get the natural expression of people and everything, even more. Congratulations to... Uh Fly Rock and Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Johnny. Uh, because you mentioned weddings, and this is also a good segue that I would like to know because you're not the first person that I've seen like on social media say, mm -hmm. you know, I don't do weddings. Like this was an exception. Yeah. I don't do weddings. Um, what is it about weddings? And I know you did some video for what for that wedding as well, mm -hmm. but what is it about weddings that photographers or certain photographers like to keep a, a long distance away from? It's, it can be stressful. Um, certain individuals that will remain unnamed, uh, they, they can make certain things stressful. But, um, and sometimes the event even, like when you take a lot of pictures and everything, oh, can you take my picture? Oh, can you do this? Not even like the bride or groom or nobody, but just like people around and it just like can drain you like socially. Like my social meter can fluctuate up and down. So. By the end of certain nights, I just be done. Mm. So it can be real stressful from like even a social aspect for me. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's a lot of pressure. I believe that pays pretty well, though, right? It pays like, amazing. Oh, my God. It's so good. <laughs> so I guess that kind of um, speaks to how stressful it can be if the pay is that well. And um, many people mm. stray away from doing weddings. That's It's people that's making like 10 racks a wedding. Oh my gosh. I can't even get, I, I'm not at that level yet, but like the average is like 2,500 to 3,000 minimum. Mm -hmm. So 
that's where I'm trying to get at if I do a wedding like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, do you see yourself, you, you want to keep um, taking photos of events. Um, do you see yourself continuing to do like pictures? I saw you did something um, with the Gibby Smiles mm -hmm. person. Uh, like so they look like real like business woman yeah you know yeah. like serious <laughs> classy business woman type thing so do mm -hmm. you see yourself continuing to do things like that as well definitely definitely my favorite pictures are the ones that i have um women in it because it's easier to take pictures of women than it is a guy like guys gonna like tough up and everything trying you know play it cool <laughs> but it's easier because you know they're just gonna be themselves and you know everything so i like taking pictures of more of the other people that more so are kind dog women <laughs> women just know one for one thing women dog i won't yeah. toughen up i'll awkward up yeah and, same here i can't i can't pose for nothing i'm i'm not a good person to be taking a picture of at all yeah i gotta i look better in person because if you look at a picture of me yeah, like i'm gonna look tough yeah I, i'm gonna just look in I'm, a bad way i'm gonna look <laughs> stupid i just look like a, a big dunce half the time so okay now, we kind of, you know, did a speed run through the photography thing because mm -hmm. I also want to get to um, videography. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, yeah, right. definitely, Video definitely. <laughs> All right, now. So um, that's a whole, that's a whole nother. Yes, yeah, a beast. That's, yeah, beast. that's a whole nother monster, a whole nother ball game. And that's kind of crazy. Did this also start in the pandemic? It even it started like out of the pandemic like we was getting out of it and i really started doing video like 2022 is when i really started video okay yeah this dude is crazy because <laughs> um that stuff is hard it's very difficult that stuff is hard so um i kind of want to go through the same process the same um questions that i asked you about photography um at what point did you think like you know what i'm gonna i i, I want to you know record some people too <laughs> it was during a time when instagram had rolled out reels and i wasn't really feeling reels i hate to reels like a lot in 2022 mm -hmm. because that's where they pushing like i was mainly a photographer so they wasn't pushing my photos nobody was seeing them I was like what's up with that so um i wanted to dabble in videos because i feel like i had a story to tell in that way too so it was during that time my first video was like all of my friends we had did a photo shoot and I did a video basically with the living single music under it. And so that was pretty tough. So it was really like late 2021, 2022, one of those years. Mm -hmm. And did that real, like, was it busting? It was busting. I got, <laughs> I got some lights on. I got a lot of light. It was like, I think 167 people liked it. So that was a lot for me at the time because I only had like 600 followers, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Yeah. The, the whole thing, it's interesting adapting to what social media pushes because as somebody who's trying to start a business you know on one hand it's like forget the reels if you don't like reels don't do it mm -hmm. but on the other hand it's like if you're trying to grow your business it, it's kind of something that you know you may not love in the mm -hmm. beginning yeah but it becomes a necessary necessary evil for sure because um i know i remember um when i did the first interview with piso um the virtual interview he made a reel for me to post Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, oh, you know, Instagram loves the reels. So, you know, when you make those and it had like a lot of engagement, I think in part because it was him and he's popular. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but also um, I'm like, all right, let me let me try this real thing mm -hmm. out. So I'm kind of with you. Like, I didn't like the reels. I'm like, they have TikTok for a reason. Keep yeah, that over there. Exactly. I'm not I can't. I tried to do TikTok. Um, it was too stressful. It was too Dude. much. It's overstimulating to me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm too old for that. I, <laughs> now, I have one. I have one. But um, I had to somebody, a young person had to tell me that you can mm -hmm. turn the volume off because I'd open up the yeah, app yeah. and then it's screaming at me with, you know, automatically. Video. Yeah. So, um, yeah. TikTok, but anyway, back to you. Mm -hmm. um, so you did this first reel, um, but that's just the reel, though. You know, you got into like short films and stuff like that. Yeah, Talk yeah. to me about your journey um, into what you're doing today. So a lot of it is still YouTube University. The person I watched the most, I don't know if you familiar with him, Valandis. No, I don't know. He's a, um, a big, big. Um, he did like. 
he took pictures on film. He was mostly known for like doing film on a uh, camera, but he actually makes films and he was a big inspiration to me. A lot of YouTube um, filmmakers on there too. So I was like, man, I can tell some more stories like through the reels and everything. I just feel like I had to make it my own and that's the way I like it even more because I made it my own and had a story to tell. Okay, so learning that now, this is a, an important question I should have asked a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, what camera do you use? I use a Canon EOS R. Okay. The first mirrorless camera that they came out with Canon. Okay. And was this, this wasn't your, like, you had the, the first camera that we talked about. Was it the T8? T7. T7. Mm -hmm. All right. And was there, like, in, you know, an interim uh, camera that you were using in between time? No, it wasn't. I actually traded my T7 in um, in the middle of the summer in 2022, I think. And that's when I made the switch over to mirrorless because I knew I wanted to do video and the T7 wasn't it wasn't it for video. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of these cameras, um, like these sophisticated cameras, they'll only shoot for video for like 30 minutes mm -hmm. so i'm guessing your camera doesn't do that it just shoot no it definitely does oh, it definitely it does. shoots only for 30 minutes so that's why i'm trying to get a cinema camera hopefully by the end of um 2024 gotcha this stuff is expensive by the way it's if you're somebody dog. if you're somebody who's not into like this Man, field <laughs> it's like three racks for just a decent camera that can take good video yeah. in my opinion it's it's expensive this stuff yeah. is expensive <laughs> so all right so capturing the moment <clears throat> Um, you've been, uh, creating some content on Instagram, um, some short content, but enjoyable content and quality content. Thank you. Thank you. Um, absolutely. So, um, one, uh, there was like this MF doom video Yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to talk about like the, the creativity as well, because, okay, you can take pictures, you can find an angle, catch somebody in their, um, you know, their natural face and, you know, without posing, um, also capturing the moment, authentic moments, but actually creating something is once again, that's another level. Mm -hmm. That's another step that you're yeah. taking. So, uh, when it comes to creating videos, coming up with a concept, how did you, did you always have that in you? Or is this something that you kind of blossomed, blossomed into? I think it's something I blossomed into because even with the photos all of my inspiration was like from music like that's where i always get my inspiration from music so like going down to like the first photo shoot i did with uh my friend gibby and to the mf doom when it all came down to like music like with that one like with the business photo shoot i did with her it was more so like a beyonce theme one i was it wasn't even supposed to be like that we were supposed to shoot that on like a mock plane somewhere in atlanta but that studio had like clothes or whatever but it all comes down to music for me, like how I get certain inspirations. Like I hear a lyric in a song, I'm like, oh, I want to like make like the lyric an actual theme of a photo shoot or a video. Okay. So, <clears throat> oh, this is interesting because you also, okay, so you mentioned the Beyonce. Mm -hmm. You have an MF Doom um, video and you also have um, an Outcast one that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, me and you, uh, that's elevators, song. yeah. yeah ele there we go. <laughs> elevators in quotation marks, me and you. Mm -hmm. There we go from AT Aliens. So, um, let's just let's just pick one. Mm -hmm. And because I like AT Aliens, that's yeah, <laughs> that, that, that. that's one of my favorite <laughs> Outcast albums. So, um, can you walk us through the prog? process of creating this video and by the way if you want to see the video you got to follow my man uh trill dog hey, on instagram listen so like for that i had my friend brandon he he was at we're both like big outcast fans like we love outcast so i knew i always wanted to do something to that song and i knew it would it meant more to me because i actually live in east point i actually like live drive past headland the low all the time like Anytime I'm driving somewhere, I'm always passing there. So I wanted to shoot there. It was actually supposed to be a photo shoot at first, but the photos, I didn't really like them. So we did more of a kind of like Atlanta type of vibe to that song and everything. And I knew I wanted him posted up on the corner of the Helen DeLo sign so we could see it. Mm -hmm. And capturing angles. Mm -hmm. um, is there a real strategy when you go into these things, do you go in like kind of, if it's not just storyboarding on a piece of paper, do you mentally storyboard or just know the certain shots that you want to take? It's I think it's a mix of both. Like sometimes I do a lot of 
pre-production, like having a certain shot I want in mind beforehand. But some of it's like it's the spur of the moment. Like I'll say, hey, I want this shot, and then we'll go here or wherever, you know. So I think it's a healthy mix of both. I don't think everything should be like stick to rigidly on the paper and everything unless it's like a commercial shoot. But mm -hmm. for personal, I think it's like a good mix to have in both. Like if you see something out that you didn't anticipate for, shoot that, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me ask you this, because this is um, in the same line of thinking with uh, the videos that you've made. Mm -hmm. You made a, a potent one. Yeah. <laughs> you made an important one. You've made um, a very vulnerable one, I would say, mm -hmm. right, about mental health and more so men, <laughs> men's <laughs> mental health. Um, and I don't want to talk too much about it. I'd rather have you explain mm -hmm. um, because you you're the creator um, can you take us through this uh, this piece of cinema? So I always had like feelings of depression, like even in high school, we always joked about it. Like, ah, oh, we finna do X, Y, Z to ourselves. Please don't do that, kids. Go see a real <laughs> therapist. Not like I did, but um, it was always something that was in the back of my mind. Like I felt those feelings, and I just felt like a way to get it out. Initially. I was a, I'm not even like a camera person for real. Initially, I was more of a poet. Like I always wrote stuff, but that really didn't get the feelings out that I wanted to express because I'd only show like my friends and everything. But the, it was like a culmination of all of that into one video. Like I knew I felt all those things and it was like bent up inside of me. Like I had to get it out somehow. So I just filmed that over a course of days and it worked out that, you know, a lot of people resonated with it. Mm hmm. And for the people who don't know, who don't know anything about this video, mm -hmm. can you describe what was going on? It's basically a conversation with myself, like, you know, the different version of myself and even like extension outside of myself. But like we as men have it with ourselves because we always do. We just never expose it to the world and everything. So kind of a conversation with like my anxiety and everything and the opposite side of that, this person's trying to heal. And I'm just stuck in the middle of between these two people. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't mind me asking, well, let's mm -hmm. let's dig a little deeper. Let's do it. <laughs> um, how did you overcome? Because uh, we have a beautiful illustration through your video. You know, mm -hmm. we get to see, and and as a as a member as of the male community, as a, <laughs> as, a as a representative of of the black male community, because mm -hmm. you know black people don't like to go to the doctor. Oh no, they don't like to, mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't like to, um, especially forget mental health. We ain't even going for no checkups, and I'm not I'm not included in we. I go to my <laughs> physicals. <laughs> I'm going to one next week. So <laughs> yeah, I, go I, to that. I, I go to the doctor. So. Um, um, I kind of lost my point talking about that black people stuff, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it get deep. It get deep. So, what did you have to do, um, you personally, um, overcoming some of these depressive feelings? Well, I had to talk to people. I didn't. I never saw a therapist personally, but a lot of my close friends, I've spoken to them. Uh, still writing my thoughts down. Obviously, prayer and meditation. You know, is a big, big help. But I just really the video helped me a lot in it because once I got it out, it felt like it was outside of my body. Like I didn't have to worry about that anymore because I knew people felt the same way and I didn't really feel alone. So the video was really a big help because I didn't even think about it anymore. I have those feelings like in passing, but not like it kind of dominated me to a certain point in my life. Mm hmm. It's good. I was pro I was processing. <laughs> I was processing that. Well, no, that's cool. Well, I'm I'm happy for you. Thank you. Man. Um, I, I was thinking about the recent interview that I did with uh, Kayla Creates, and it mm -hmm. was also something you said something that kind of mirrored her feelings as well. Um, uh, that might mean something where you put something out there on Front Street, mm -hmm. like this is who I am, and this is something that I've dealt with. And then people are able to resonate with you and let you know, oh, you're dealing with this. So am I. Mm -hmm. Oh, word. So and like you said, um, you realize you're not alone. Yeah, because normally I'm a very private person outside of what the Internet perceives me. Y'all don't know nothing about me. I swear y'all don't. <laughs> but all those feelings like I kept them high here for years, but it was just for some reason. And the fact that I got it out, it was like I didn't it didn't have no control over me because now. Everybody else has control over 
quote unquote, you know, so it was real good to get that out. And, you know, I love that interview too, because she talked, we have the same feelings. Like I felt those feelings all the time, especially going through high school. Mm -hmm. What was it about high school? Now, high school, just being a teenager, Mm -hmm. being a teenager um, in general, um, a lot of stuff going on uh, in life. What was it uh, about high school that uh, really had you down and out? I think a lot of the times, I was trying to fit in a lot when I knew I didn't fit in. Like, I obviously had my friends there and everything, too, and it was cool. But, like, I knew that I wasn't acting like myself. And, two, in high school, in my freshman year, we had someone commit suicide. And that was, like, my first time ever encountering that. And I didn't know what I was supposed to feel. Like, I felt those feelings, too. But, like, I didn't know that people actually do it, like... And it was a person I went to class with. And if, even in junior year, somebody I knew real close and everything, um, he had committed suicide on the day before our winter break and everything. And that was super tough because I saw him like the week before it happened. So those situations was really created like a lot of negative energy in my mind and everything. So two people mm-hmm. within your four years of high school did that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. That's <laughs> yeah, not man. it's yeah. That's not normal. It's not natural. Mm-mm. And it's really sad that not this happened more than once within your 4 years. Yeah. So, um just out of curiosity, how did the school respond to this? They did what they thought was best. I mean, what was really unfortunate about, um, and I love my high school, by the way, but what was really unfortunate about the second time, you know, we it happened the week before, and we still had to, like, take our finals and everything like that. And, I mean, as a kid, like, we wasn't trying to take them anyway, but, like, especially mm-hmm. on top of, like, all of what happened, like, the emotional weight, like, and sometimes, like, they went in because the school has, like, school counselors, and they had to go into, like, each of his classrooms and everything that he took so that, you know, they could like kind of console us or whatever, you know, they brought tissue and everything and said, Hey, if y'all need anything, you know, you can reach out to us, but we wasn't really, you know, on that type of time. So, you know, they did their best, but I mean, I feel like they could have done a little bit more to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, I hate to say this at the end of the day, they had a job to do. Yeah. Talking about the finals. Exactly. Some people aren't going to be ready for finals. (laughs) Yeah. We wasn't at all, but they're on a a schedule. It's a, it's education, but it's, it's It's a a business, right? It's, (laughs) I was trying not to say it, (laughs) but business, everything's a business, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a business. Jeez. Well, so (laughs) (laughs) sorry to get all dark and everything. (laughs) I I asked the questions. I, you know, you got to prepare for whatever <laughs> right, you're going to yeah. get. Um, okay. So um, just swinging it back around to um, how you were able to um, get out of those depressive feelings, putting it on front street. I'm not feeling so alone anymore. So mm-hmm. I'm happy for you, homie. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Good job. Really. <laughs> you know, he likes, he, he be, Good job, Don. <laughs> yeah. Sock it to me. <laughs> All right. So um, now where are we going next with um, the videography as well. Do you want to do um, events as well, or do you see yourself um, steering toward the short film um, category? Definitely shifting towards the short film category. Um, I'm thinking thinking about starting a YouTube, really. I'm very seriously thinking about it because Instagram is cool, but like the long form of Instagram, it only works for certain people that have like that built up following and everything. So I did like a poll on my Instagram to see if people wanted like the long form or the short form. And it was like a mix of both. A lot of people want both. So I'm thinking about using um, YouTube as a platform to do more long form stuff. Because mm-hmm. my dream right now is like to be a cinematographer, like a, like they call it in like films, like director of photography, DP. So I love to like shoot like cinematic scenes and everything for different short films or commercials or whatever. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, speaking of which, um, mm-hmm. this was something that I wanted to cover as well. Were the opportunities that you've had since you began um, photography and videography, um, what opportunities have opened up um, ever since? Definitely um, concerts. Concerts was a big, big thing that I got into. Shout out uh, Mariah and her lovely people. Um, and a lot of other events, um, corporate events I've been to, meeting different people, because um, I shoot for a magazine now. Um, through one of the, actually people in my hall, he helped me get that. 
So I met a lot of like well-known people through this um, camera. Okay. Now, how in the world, and you don't have to say names, of mm -hmm. course, um, how in the world did you <laughs> get lined up with Mariah the Scientist? Uh, I saw some other somebody. I think the the chick future used to date Des Des Dior. Dior. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'd be in crazy spots, man. Y'all just don't know. Yeah, like how like when it comes to building connections, and um, you mentioned you you have you you got like a low key plug, somebody mm -hmm. who's plugged in. But when it comes to building connections and, and getting those opportunities, um, you know, how do you navigate that way? So I say for the Mariah one. What's funny is, obviously, I've always been a fan of her, especially like during the pandemic and everything. I've always been a fan. But um, my dad and um, actually has a friend who will remain nameless for the sake of the podcast, but um, he's actually Mariah's dad. So through that, I got um, informed that that was a dad. And he, my dad always said, yeah, so her dad got, you know, somebody that can sing real good. I'm like, yeah, you know, anybody can sing, you know, <laughs> and type thing. But he didn't never say it who. So one day I was over at my dad's house and, you know, I should got showed a picture. Of, it was her next to like Rico Nasty. I don't know if you know who that is, yeah. but yeah. Um, I was like, Rico Nasty is your daughter? It was like, no, Mariah. <laughs> I was like, what? Like my jaw dropped to the floor. Like I didn't know what was going on. So, uh, yeah, ever since then, they've, they've been kind to let me come to certain events that they have in Atlanta. So it's been real nice. Shout out to Mariah and her people. Thank y'all. Shout out to Mariah and her <laughs> people. Thank y'all. So um, that's what's up. That's what's up. And even um, you saying thank you, it may, it may sound um, uh, obligatory, but in reality, somebody who has what you would call a celebrity status mm -hmm. doesn't have to give you nothing at all. Right. At and, all. And, and, but off the strength of the relationships, um, you know, kind enough to say, Oh yeah, come on through, do your thing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm always grateful when I'm able to come through. Yeah. Really. So that, that's what's up. You know, that, that, that's a good look. That's a good look. And the pictures are fire too. Like I said, <laughs> um, if you want to see these pictures, you, you got to go to the, the early home. ones. Not, but I mean, the recent ones, they've been, they've been all right. I'm always critical of myself. They could have been better, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. So how, how would you view your progress through the years? Definitely increasing, especially like now because before i never used like flash and everything now but i want to do more studio stuff honestly like if i can do events with my eyes closed but like more portraits like how magazines do it and everything i've always wanted to do that so more more um studio based sessions i say mm -hmm. what would be the best advice that you would give someone who is interested in this craft mm -hmm. start just start because if you don't start, you know, you won't know what you need to do or what you even like and everything and really continue through it because you're going to be mad at yourself. Like you're not going to know what to do this set and that set and everything. But I think just starting and keeping like pushing through it is what you really need to do. Don't don't stop. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of highs and lows. There's a lot of pros and cons. Um, <laughs> and I want to I want to know about some of your personal pros and cons um, what you love about um, creating photos and videos and what you don't love so much. Um, I love the fact that I'm able to express like a part of myself. Like it feels like I'm letting go of like a certain aspect to the world and everything. I hate the platforms that are used to express like Instagram. I have a love hate relationship with it because they only show like your pictures or videos or whatever to a certain amount of people because of the way the algorithm works, whatever that is. So it's like I have a certain amount of followers, but it's like a fifth of them see it, which is annoying because I want everybody to see it. But that's kind of struggles with it. You know, going to certain events like concerts and everything, sometimes, you know, you'll have certain individuals like security and everything tapping on the show like, what you doing? You're not supposed to have a camera in here. Don't worry about that, man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but um, certain certain aspects of it, like I said before, like weddings, it can be socially draining when you keep interacting with certain people and everything. And you know, sometimes you got to watch out for people because like they'll steal your stuff. It hasn't happened to me, thankfully, mm -hmm. but like you know, people be watching you and your moves. So you know, I watch people too. So it's cool. yeah, absolutely. And uh, as we mentioned before, this stuff is not. It's not cheap. <laughs> it's, it's not cheap at all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> 
do your do your research on it um and you'll see you'll you'll get a rude awakening and um <clears throat> i also did want to touch on that as well um the price points of certain things um because to maintain um this craft um and taking it further as uh you know you a job a career um you you got to keep up you know you might mm -hmm. have a, a new event to do and i see you on the gram too like you got all sorts of stuff rigs <laughs> and <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like yeah, you got all sorts of stuff um in order to do your job mm -hmm. um to the best of your ability um in the realization that you know these things cost money um talk to me about uh put us on game on you know acquiring um what they call gear yeah so I've been fortunate to, you know, have some uh, funding through through um, my folks and everything for start like when I was starting out. Mm -hmm. But um, it's expensive. Like you got to think about like camera, obviously lens, lens filters, which I use to like help out, you know, enhance the picture, the photo, whatever. Um, the rigs in itself is not cheap. Accessories, oh my God, they are not cheap. Uh, like little adapters will cost you like 30 to 50 dollars depending on which one you get your laptop ssd so i think minimum i've spent about like five thousand for my whole camera and everything and everything that encompasses it mm -hmm. it is not it's not gonna get cheaper anytime soon yeah not yeah so i'm somebody who you know i i see the trill dawn on instagram i like his pictures um but 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 the money's low um, what would you suggest to somebody who wants to um, get a camera and doesn't know what to do, doesn't know how to buy a camera, how to find a camera, lenses and all this stuff? What would you tell somebody who's who's kind of short? A lot of people say start with your phone. And that's true. But I never was a person that took a lot of pictures on my phone personally. So I would say it's a lot of because I never get anything new nowadays unless it's like an accessory. But um it's a lot of used places like that you can get your stuff from. Like here is this place called KEH Camera, and you can, it's right actually here in Smyrna. Um, you can get your stuff from there. They have an online store, MPB. You can get stuff from there. Amazon, Facebook Marketplace. Just get you a little cheap something, and then to start off with, even if it's like a point and shoot or like a little crop sensor camera, you know, it doesn't matter what you start with as long as you like get the thing that suits what you're trying to do at first. Because mm -hmm. they run real cheap nowadays. Like you can get like. A good camera for like less than a hundred dollars. Really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like like a, like a good one starting now. If you a beginner and trying to get like my camera, I, I ain't going. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but like some like a, even like a little small film camera or something like that, you know. But film is expensive, so that's a whole another expense. So kind of moving away from uh, you know. Uh, moving away from your creativity mm -hmm. um, because you have a real love for Alicia Keys. Yes, I do. <laughs> I want to, I want to yes, end I off do. on some, on some Alicia Keys <laughs> stuff, on some music stuff. Um, so you mentioned that your mom was playing a lot of Alicia Keys mm -hmm. and um, are you a Stan or a I'm fan? I'm a big Stan. Okay. I'm a big fan. I love Alicia Keys. The Diary of Alicia Keys is the best album of all time. You can add me. I will debate with you. <laughs> We can need, we can get into the specifics later, but um, I love that album so much. It's downloaded on my phone. She's gonna be my number one play artist at all time. Every Spotify rap or Apple Music replay, she's gonna be number one. I saw her in concert this year. It was amazing. Like it was like she was right there, and that was like everything to me. It was like a dream come true. Not to sound like I'm, you know, what I'm saying riding and like that, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she she's great. So, all right. Now, what is it? Now, I, I agree. She's great. Um, but what is it about Alicia Keys? Because every artist can have a certain significance to um, individuals. So for you, what do you love so much about Miss Keys? I Mrs. Think, Keys. Sorry, Swiss. <laughs> I think just because I grew up with it um, as a child, like that was like all my mom played on road trips. And that's what I like think in my mind as a good time and like relaxes me and just I enjoy the music like I really only play her when I'm like traveling and like when I'm out and about and everything like I have to be like on a long road trip or on a plane ride to listen to her because it just puts me in like a calm mood and like her I love piano that's my favorite instrument so naturally Alicia Keys I love piano so it's gonna work mm -hmm. <laughs> 
the trill dawn everybody Jaden is in the building are is there any last words any shout outs any people you want to show some love to um any messages for anybody who's watching shout out to my mother uh i love you so much thank you for getting me into photography and videography um and everybody has helped me along the way if you're just starting don't worry about the results just keep going don't don't worry about it just keep going because people are gonna come eventually so don't stress about that at all shout out to the folks i can i can tell from um everything that you were saying that you had a nice structured home um solid foundation it seems like at least to me um i don't know the reality but it sounds like you had a solid foundation and a good support system so shout out to the parents being yeah parents. Shout, out, shout out to the folks man yeah, shout, shout, out to the folks. shout out shout out to the folks um thank you for coming on the show of course you know I'm always, hey subscribe to the cool hand <laughs> podcast listen to in due time that's the top three albums of the year don't hey Listen to it, man. He, he's fire. Said, he said listen to Go, me. really. That's my favorite yeah. song. Yeah, listen to it, because I get 33% <laughs> of them streams. Oh, so, word? You be getting the revenue? Yeah, so please. But this is the thing. We're little dogs. So, it, you know. A Big dog. For all the dogs. <laughs> we need 100,000 streams. Put some money in my pockets. This is the Cool Hand Podcast, something you got to deal with. Jaden is in the building. Real Atlanta native here. Real Atlanta. Cool Hand Podcast, something you got to deal with. Easy. Easy. Beautiful.